So anyway, uh, Suli, yo, so, so, so we, all right, so we played basketball in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays for a long time, and I did not know this person that I was dunking on every morning. Whoa! Like, wow! You know. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> wow! But um, but yeah, so glad. Then I saw you at a show, and I was like, wow, this man is is doing has been doing it forever. Like, yeah, um, yeah, I. It's weird. Like I, I always knew I wanted to do comedy, and I was lucky because I went to UCLA. Uh, we had a comedy club at UCLA, which is amazing. And we would get together, and we would help each other with our jokes, and then do shows in the dorms. And we would book like one dude that was like in the game a little more. But at that time, it was all these dudes that are household names now that were just working in the clubs. Like so. In college, I was doing shows with David Spade, and yeah. you know what I mean. So it was like, it was dope. You had like a bridge to what the real business. And for me, I got discovered. Jerry Seinfeld did a show at UCLA. Four of us from the comedy club opened for him. His managers were in the house, and afterwards they came up to me and they were like, "Yo, you have a lot of talent. Uh, here's our card, and give us a call." And I was a junior in college, and. I called them, of course, uh, and then you know I, I started working in the clubs. So that's yeah. how I got discovered. Got it. So what what has kept you in the game? What is like a lesson that you've learned, like that, that like, kind of like resonates most? Um, I think I think uh, I I was mentored by Gary Shandling. Okay. Uh, who um, I don't know if you guys saw Judd Apatow's documentary about Gary Shandling. Uh, the Zen Diaries of Gary Shandling. If you haven't seen it, check it out if you're interested in comedy because that dude was like a genius and uh, I was friends with him for about 18 years um, and he was very good about helping me stay on path. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and so kind of adopting a mentor. like. Y well, yeah, well, having a mentor adopt you, yeah, really, and, and being open enough to, to help you. Like, I, you know... Uh, he, he's, he's been gone for a couple of years now, but a lot of the things that we talked about and, you know, just working and writing with him uh, affects me to this day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I realize, like, this is a marathon. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, like, it takes a while to find your truth and talk about shit that makes sense and not try and be something that you're not. And right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's a lot of that. So what was it like? So let's fast forward to the 90s. What was it like working on uh, Don't Be a Menace, and how did that come about? Well, um, uh, I don't know if you guys saw Don't Be a Menace. Do we have I a clip that we could play? Crazy Legs and Don't Be a Real Menace. Quick. Um, is it? What? What is it? Yeah, it's gonna play oh, on these. Oh, whoa! We have these All screens right. over here, and uh, oh, cool! Oh, great! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just go to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Cool. We'll give somebody some. So, money. if you've never seen this man before, this is who he was. So, this is the character I played in Don't <laughs> Be a Menace. Do we have sound or? Test is. Hey, play it from the beginning real quick. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> this yeah. is so bad. I got a dream. <laughs> Can't test this. Yeah. That's work. Yeah. You know. Can't test this. Can't test this. Hey. <laughs> break it down. Hey, I was a break I was a break dancer, by the way. I was a break dancer, by the way. Hell yeah. And I put a uh, I put a tennis ball in my pants so I looked a little girthier. That's just a little extra something for you guys. Um All right, so now you have a context. Uh, now you have a context. Wow, that's hilarious. Like a clip from a movie did better than my stand-up set. That's great. That is great. Hey man, we're getting humbled every day in this life, right? You that's talk about what it's all about. <laughs> that is what it's all about. Um, no, so I'll tell you. Um, you did that I, with I started, no legs. Yeah. I, I started uh, when I started. It was right around the same time that uh, that that Sean started, and 
you know, like I was friends with Keenan and, and Damon. And uh, so we were all in the clubs together and, you know, we wrote this movie and, you know, the Wayans are funny, like they don't give you anything. Right. So I think I had to audition like five times for that part, even though I helped write the movie. To be in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah, to yeah. be to be in a wheelchair. But, yeah. um, it, but it was great, though, because like, you know, we did that movie. We were hungry. We wanted to make an impact. And, you know, years later, people like it. It's like a cult thing. So, you know, Got it is what audition. it is. Yeah, and then yeah. you're still touring with them. You're still working with them. Yeah, uh, Sean Waynes and I are touring right now, so we've been touring this year, and uh, it's kind of cool. Like I've, I've never, I haven't been able to devote like a year to touring exclusively. Yeah, because I write and produce a lot. So um, this year has been the first year to do that. So it's been a lot of fun. Like I've been going out, and people are really like support it. Like it's great. It's great. Like did you when you did that role? Did you know it was gonna be like it was gonna be such a memorable movie and a memorable role um, and all those things. Actually, uh, it, it like honestly, when it came out, it didn't really pop like we right. thought it was. So it was it was disappointing to be honest with you. Like oh. I was like, yo, we fucking put three years into that shit and it didn't pop. And then it went to cable. And then that's when it popped. So it was like eight months later, and people were like, yo, that movie's hilarious. And I was like. I don't care. <laughs> 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 and then, like, over the years, it's gotten more and more popular where it's just like, you know, like like my uh, my kids' friends like that movie now, right. which that's weird. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yo, your dad is crazy legs? That's that's odd. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do we have uh, questions from – or is there – yeah, we'll just go hands on. Yeah. yeah. But, hey, so, obviously, like, Gary Shanley was, like, a big man to a lot of people, like, Avatar and others. Yeah. Um, and that was your big thing that he kind of like instilled in others was like to continue to mentor. Like, when did you get to a point where you're like, all right, now it's kind of my turn to? Well, you know what's, what's, what, that's, that's actually a great question. Um, like, I think, you know, there are certain people that you deal with in life that change you. And Gary was one of those people. Like, my friendship with him changed me. And you can't go back. You know what I mean? And, and like, when he, you know, when he, when he died, uh, it, at first it was really hard for me to connect because he was so real and so honest and then you're just back out in the real world and you're like, yo, most people aren't that honest. So um, I think that was, that was just who he was. Like he really did uh, enjoy mentoring people. It was important to him. If he felt you uh, were doing the work, he was right there for you. Um, he called me before he passed away and helped and asked me to help him get ready for comedians and cars. And at the time, I was really honored by that. You know what I mean? It was like, yo, I get to, you know, I was, I opened for Seinfeld back in the day. I get to help him do this show that they're both doing. So there was this this personal connection, and I had no idea that was going to be one of the last things that he did on TV. Uh, so it was, you know, it was like a, it it was this this feeling of feeling like really inspired that you were asked to do something that makes that kind of impact and you know like I, I help people out I mentor you just you know you can't help but like he gave to me so I'm going to give to other people that, that's a great question yeah another question yeah in the back how many pair of sneakers do you have and if you had to design your own what would you do because you're thinking about this so there's probably something really creative and unique there Another good question. Uh, <laughs> I uh, okay. Every every few years, I do a sneaker purge, right? Where I just sell off, or I give some away, or whatever. Like I, I just go, okay, you got to get rid of stuff, right? Um, so now I would say seventy mm, ish, seventy ish. I have a I have a I have a, a storage space in uh, well I'm not gonna say where but <laughs> I almost gave up the lair uh, <laughs> but I have a storage space and I you know and and that's where they are. You got but, pair. That's 140 shoes. You, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you only wear one shoe. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like seven about 70 pairs. I used to have a lot more, but like I said, I get rid of a lot. So how would you design it? Uh, you know what? I've been thinking about that because, uh, like, I like like Travis Scott's, like all the designs that he's done. I think those are dope. Uh, I would probably, I would probably have to do a Crazy Leg shoe, I guess. 
Oh, it seems like that to. would be that would be pretty dope. Oh my god, have you haven't thought about that yet? I, I have. I oh, actually okay, have. Yeah. yeah. I, I would okay. do a crazy leg shoe. That would be dope. Yeah. It would have gold right. rims. It would be dope. <laughs> <laughs> good question. Right, right, we're two go, good questions. Let's go to the uh, bucket. Not oh, as, the bucket. Oh, we're yeah, going yeah. to the bucket we're now. Going to the bucket. Okay. Um, not as good of questions though, but um, but valid. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the bucket questions. So, um, how did you lose your virginity? Oh my God, that's yeah. these are great gonna, questions. Yeah, gonna, these yeah, are great. I was gonna say. Okay, uh, I, I redact that statement. That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, this is so nerdy. <laughs> Uh, I was on a cruise ship. Yeah. I got booked on a cruise ship. I was a comedian before I lost my virginity, which shows you the priority of how much I care. Uh, whatever. Uh, so I got booked on this cruise ship. This shit is hilarious. I got booked on this cruise ship, and normally it was all older people, right? So it probably wouldn't go down, or you wouldn't talk about it. Uh... <laughs> But this group of girls that were studying to be travel agents were on the ship. And I remember one of them was married and she still wanted to get it cracking. And I was like, no, no, uh, no way. Just say Yeah, no. I, I was really like, uh-uh. But then this other girl was like, I'm not married. And I was like, yes. yes. So, uh, yeah, so I lost, my, I lost my virginity on a comedy cruise. Take, Hell yeah. Take note if you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you uh I uh NCL, I think. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you might want to get booked. <laughs> Virginity's going down. <laughs> uh right, wait, um, she had a question. She yeah, had a question. Yeah. Um back kind of to the mentorship or like relationship in comedy. Yeah. coming up and how did those relationships change and also it's kind of different but kind of similar like women it's hard to find mentors because there's just less women and sometimes right. women don't want to mentor women for right. a reason like what's a sign that a mentor like has good intentions well um another good question Damn, uh yeah, good yeah you question. guys are coming with it on the questions um i would say uh just in terms of, of finding your pack, that's the most important thing. Like, I think with comedy, you gotta just get out and do it, and go do it wherever you can do it, because stage time is so valuable, you know what I mean? Like, and it's so scarce here in LA. Like, yeah, there's a lot of shows, but a lot of shows are book shows, and people are booking their friends, so get in where you fit in. That crew that you pal around with typically becomes your friends, and hopefully your mentors, and you know, Hopefully, people just take a liking in what you do. Like, I was lucky. Like, you know, uh, Seinfeld, I'd see him in the clubs, and he was always encouraging. And, you know, like, like my friendship with Gary was a long-term one that, you know, developed into a writing relationship. So, um, you know, like, like Sarah Silverman and I are friends. And, you know, like a lot of the people that I started with, you know, during that time, you, you just stay friends with. You know what I mean? Like, it really is a smaller community than you think. Um, you'll know, you'll know if people are right for you. Uh, one thing that Gary used to say to me uh, was people will come into your life to help keep you on path or try and pull you off. And that's a great uh, just little piece of wisdom to help guide you. You'll, you'll know. Yeah, for sure. Cool, great question. Um, we are running out of time, but everyone can start clapping your hands right now for Sully McCullough, guys. Thanks. Dropping gems. Is there any parting statement you want to give? Or? Uh, Thanks for being here, man. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, no, this was fun. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, cool. cool.